Okay, yesterday I uh, received a package in the mail and uh, I ordered some casts from the Lithic Casting Lab of Clovis points to study them firsthand or as close to firsthand as I can. Uh, there's some kind of resin and they look pretty good. I'm very pleased with these. Um, this one here I ordered because it, it's a, a Clovis point from the Galt site. Now this was this particular one was found uh, by a private individual so uh, the information about this one is not included in the archaeological study uh, covered in the book that I have. Uh, but it's interesting anyway. I'm going to be trying to imitate this particular uh, Clovis point first uh, in every detail that I can. Uh, material and size and shape and everything. Uh, one thing that struck me about this one that was unusual though is it's not symmetrical. Uh, the point is not centered. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe the it's a uh, it's been repaired or reworked, but that's kind of unusual. Uh, since I read that uh, symmetry is very important in Clovis technology. Anyway, uh, another thing that I noticed right away was the quality of the edge. It had, you know, I went over this uh, in a couple of videos. Uh, something that I call an artifact type edge, and this certainly does have a very thin edge that you don't see very often with a modern flint napping. And it seems to only be fluted on one side. Again, uh, it's not symmetrical. The uh, the flakes. I can see how these are pressure up here, uh, but these look very similar to the indirect percussion flakes that I do. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to imitate this uh, point with indirect percussion, with antler and hammerstone. Uh, I may brace the tip against something while I'm fluting to try to get a long flute like this or, and I might wrap leather around it to uh, keep it from snapping but this one has a lot more thickness than I thought it, it would which is interesting so it should be easier to flute in, with this kind of thickness and the base is different than the four Clovis points that are in the book. So that's a total of five different uh, types of bases for these Clovis points at the Galt site so far. Uh, these other points are from different areas. This one is from South Dakota, from a uh, Mastodon kill site in, in South Dakota. Just amazed at how small this one is. It's only about, well, it's a little over two inches long, two and one eighth inches long by, it's uh, almost seven eighths wide. I didn't didn't know Clovis points could be this small. I mean, I, I guess I did because I do have the Overstreet guide that has some small Clovis points in it, but just seeing this. Uh, up close in real life just kind of uh, surprised me. Now in, in the book it details the uh, the width to thickness ratio on a lot of the Clovis points and Clovis artifacts on that site and the, the average was uh, I think it was 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 somewhere in that range this looks a little bit thick, but I'll measure it later. Uh, this is uh, from Illinois, and uh, this one is also. 
two completely different flaking patterns although the side the length is very similar I would just by looking at it uh, just by guessing it I would guess that this is a preform there is some grinding a little bit I can feel that it's smooth here and rougher up here but like on this this one I can feel the sharpness of the edge even though it's a, a resin a plastic and I can feel the smoothness down here where it's been ground uh, there's not much grinding in here but there's a lot of grinding on the sides here on this one I don't feel much grinding I feel like it's been prepared for for uh, flaking and not really ground down a lot and uh, there's not much retouch looks like the fluting was not completed on the base looks like the, it was going to be prepared for another flute down the middle and uh, this bulb has not been removed so to me this one looks like a, a preform I would imagine uh, when this point is finished this step will be taken out by a flake run across this way anyway very interesting points there's no substitute for actually having the, uh, the actual object in your hand to look at first first hand and close now I can do this style of flaking with indirect percussion I don't have any doubt that I could do this at this stage uh, what I, I think I'm going to have difficulty with is this fine pressure flaking Uh, with abo tools I'm gonna have to resharpen that antler quite a bit to maintain the uh, this type of flaking anyway very interesting I just wanted to share these with you and I will be imitating this one here uh, learning the basic characteristics and uh, I think I'll buy a few more casts. There's some more Clovis points that are available, and I'll share those with you in, in the future as well. That's it.